Hey everyone, welcome to the second week of Anna and Michael talking real estate, going over real life. And frankly, we had one show planned for today. And then guess what? Real estate steps up and sometimes bad stuff happens. And we're going to talk <laughs> about one of those bad things that happen. And, and we're going we're gonna to first welcome Anna to the show and let, let her tell her story. So Anna, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Michael. How about you? Oh, I'm doing very well. So I saw your social media post. I think it was three days ago, maybe, maybe four. And you had <laughs> just one of those things that happened. And uh, why, don't, why don't you share with the audience what it was? Sure. So Sunday afternoon, I had just gotten home from a event away and said, you know, today I want to do nothing. I just want to relax and take it easy. And just as we got home from lunch, as it always happens, uh, sat down and my phone started going off and apparently we had a fire. So, you know, I got a text and I couldn't get back a hold of the person. And it turned out that I had a four unit apartment building that had caught on fire. And they were sending me pictures as I was waiting for my vehicle because my husband had just taken my vehicle um, to take my kids somewhere. So I'm, you know, frantic and, and trying to connect with all the tenants and make sure everybody was out. And it ended up that my building, you know, three of the four units are basically completely charred and gutted between the fire and the firefighters and the water and all of that. And the other one is, you know, halfway gone. So I have uh, had my very first fire ever, thankfully. Oh. And, and thankfully, all the tenants escaped. Everybody got out safely. So no, but no humans died. Uh, we had one pet that was lost and and we lost the building. So I've just been really focused these last few days on trying to react to it and help my tenants as best I can and and work with investigators and insurance and all those kind of people that are out there every day and and wanting to figure out what happened. Yeah. So first off, absolutely thank goodness there was no loss of life. Um mm -hmm. it's a shame that a pet was lost. Any loss of life is tragic. Um but again, really you know, when you're in real estate and you have the amount of units that, that we both have, time says, you know, eventually the dice are going to come up and it's kind of your turn, right? Yes. Um, over my 20 years, I've actually suffered three different fires. One in a house, uh, which wasn't, didn't start in my house, but, you know, house next door caught fire, caught a tree, tree went to my house. One was in a multifamily in unit that affected three units uh, before the firefighters got in. Uh, and then one in a duplex. So um, I remember that first time. My first time was that duplex. And it is scary beyond scary. Definitely. You know, there's just so many things that come into play that you don't really think about. You know, we all know, like you said, that a fire could happen at one point. We always make sure that there's fire extinguishers and smoke detectors and mm -hmm. all those things, mm -hmm. you know, to try to prevent them before they get bad. And I've actually had two situations where tiny fires started, but thankfully they were able to put them out with extinguishers and, yep. you know, no real damage. Um, but this is the first one, you know, that that's quite large. And like you mentioned, one of your properties, um, you know, a unit next door, not only did we have fire damage to our building, but the siding on the unit next door, ah, which is just a huge yeah. part, you know, is, is melted all along <laughs> the side of their building. And so now, you know, their insurance wants to, my insurance to pay and mine yeah. wants them to pay. And, you know, we're starting that whole um, process of multiple investigators, you know, descending on the property to figure out who's at fault. And, um, and then on the other side next door, they actually had their windows open, airing out. Oh, and no. when the firefighters came, they didn't shut their windows. So they got water inside their unit and smoke, <laughs> and, you know, ruin their carpet. And so now their insurance company wants to come out and figure out what they think caused the fire. So, um, all, you know, all kinds of people are impacted that you, you don't really think about. You think I've got insurance, my mm -hmm. buildings will be okay. And you just pray nobody ever gets hurt. Um, but, but a lot of different people are impacted when these things happen. Yeah. And then the other thing, um, that shouldn't be missed is you pro and while you were planning to have a slow, I forget Sunday, you had a whole week of stuff planned that suddenly was not the top priority, right? When, a, when an emergency like this happens, it's an unplanned for event and it goes right to the top. Like everything else gets, gets moved down. And that's just the reality, right? 
Yeah. It, it's one of those things that, you know, you, you think you have your, your day so well planned out, you have everything time blocked, you know, that, you know, this day, you know, five hours are spent and you try to be efficient. So you block up your time and something like this happens. And, you know, all those things kind of fall behind a little bit. You, you deal with the urgent and the important gets put off till it's urgent. Yeah. And then all the other things that are nice to do literally today, I've, I've set all day um, since 7 a.m. this morning, just doing, you know, bills and things that I needed to do early in the week that didn't get done. And so yeah. it definitely kind of throws you for a loop and, and makes for some very long days. Yeah. One question, and you may not have had a chance to answer this, but one question I asked myself each time at some point was, what do I want to do with this building? Because eventually you're going to have a choice, right? Do you take the check, which is net of any loan balance? Or do you rebuild, right? Um, have you thought about that at all? I, I have, you know, it's interesting. I, I honestly did not even think about it the first two days. I just yeah. was, you know, let's deal with the people. We'll figure this out. I know I have insurance and I know they're there. But I had two people instantly react on Facebook and say, I'll buy your building. Ah. You know, let me know what you do with it. And I'm just like, you know, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Like, give me some time to, you know, think about the people. But, um, yeah. uh, you know, I, I did have replacement cost insurance, which is an important thing to have. So a lot sure. of times you can choose, do you want, you know, X dollar or do you want it to be full replacement cost if it ends up being more expensive? Mm -hmm. And as I'm hearing, you know, the restoration company and the insurance people talk about the limits of coverage, not only being replacement costs, but then you've got, you know, coverage for the teardown that's separate mm -hmm. and then coverage for codes upgrades when you have to rebuild. So things like, you know, you have a, an old furnace, you know, to, to upgrade to new or new types of electrical or plumbing, you have all these fees, you know, and, and extra expenses involved in, in codes and things like that. So I very quickly found that um, even though I have very good insurance, the cost to rebuild this thing, um, including the tear out and all the codes upgrades, I'm barely going to be able to rebuild it, even being very well insured. Um, so, yeah. so it's a good question. I, at this point, you know, I have a mortgage, so I had to go talk to the bank right away and say, yeah. by the way, your collateral, <laughs> not only do you have a first on it, you have a second on it, but it's burned down. Yeah. So, you know, let me keep paying on it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, going to rebuild and you'll have a nicer, newer building that's worth even more money when we're done, hopefully. So at this point, I think I'm going to rebuild. Yeah. Um, but I really don't know till I get all the estimates back and, and see what makes the most sense. Yeah. So what I chose to do um, is on the duplex in the house, uh, they were total losses. Uh, I actually took the proceeds, uh, net of debt, and then sold the lot separately. So I cashed out. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. On the 10 unit building where I lost three, we did do a whole, whole rebuild. And I think we came out of pocket with upgrades and all of that, plus deductible probably about 15 grand. Um, but so we did do the whole rebuild and, and it, it took six months longer than I thought. I expected it. I do remodels all the time and some ground up, yeah. right? I expected, ah, you know, maybe four months. They're little 600 square foot units, right? One story, flat roofs. I mean, man, city gets involved, all these fees and, and stuff. It was, uh, I'm not sure I would do that again, frankly. Um, but yeah, it'll yeah. be something to think and about. And in the seasons, you know, we're going into winter to your oh, point where we yeah. think about timing and say, how long can you do, but you know, we'll start to get snow here and that will slow things down. And you know, who knows? I'm just, I'm grateful that I do have a, a business cover policy that allows me loss of rents. Yes. So however long this thing takes to be, to rebuild, I will be given a check every month for the rental income um, for the, the units that, you know, per the leases that they had in place. So, yeah. you know, I'm just, I can't say um, how grateful I am that my insurance guy was like, you need to pay extra, you need loss of rents, you yes. need, re you know, replacement costs. And then binders that actually gave us um, more than double the amount for the teardown and for the codes. Um, so there's just so many costs involved, but thankfully that type of insurance coverage will allow me to at least continue to collect rents while it's being built so that I can keep paying the mortgage payment so yeah. that if I want to, I can, I can keep the, you know, keep, uh, and actually have a much nicer property when it's all said and done. Yeah. Uh, not knowing how long it takes to build in your neck of woods, check your policy. Cause all of mine maxed out at 12 months. 
and that mm-hmm. three units got to the eleventh month. Um, wow! And, and we don't have snow, so um, wow! Yeah, it was. That's it took unbelievable. A while. Mostly because of codes. Yeah, well, that in. I mean, honestly, right, looking back on it, maybe my team was divided attention. I had them going elsewhere. But yeah, I, I never thought it would take that long. But you're right. We had mm-hmm. lost rents. We got, we got the checks for the three units. It, was all, it, was, it worked out fine. Um, but just the amount of stress that you don't plan for uh, because of a, an act of whatever that you, didn't, that you don't cause, right? You walked home Sunday, some event happened, and you know, one of your assets burned down. So it's, it's just... The real, real, you know, bad things can happen in this business. It's not all checks and big stacks of cash and fancy cars, right? And absolutely, and more more people need to realize that. Uh, but it, having and I good, think, you know, you too. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, the other thing is, you think that you've got all these systems and processes in place, and that they're going to prevent all these things from happening. So, for example, we had fire extinguishers. Well, I still don't know why they didn't use them. I, I haven't been able to get her return. The one lady who's, who's a, a unit that started in to return our calls and, you know, answer those kind of questions. But mm-hmm. um, the other thing is, you know, I knew this tenant had some issues and I had tr- tried to work with them out of the kindness of my heart for too long. Um, they were behind on rent and I had just asked for an eviction. And I had been granted basically a pay and stay where they could stay if they paid. Um, And I said, listen, judge, I'm, I'm nervous about this unit. There's things going on that I won't go into now, but she was also kind of a hoarder. Uh, And so there was a lot of things all around. And I thought, you know, this is a real fire hazard is the first thing we actually said to the judge two weeks ago. And we've been trying to get her to clean things up and, you know, not, then not paying. And he said, no, she can stay as long as she, you know, pays and and starts to clean things up. And sure enough, um, you know, the fire ended up starting and I have no doubt that it spread quickly because of, you know, stuff that was there. So I'm thinking, you know, it's hard in this business because you want to have a heart and you want to be really good to people. And and that's one of my non-negotiables is to, to be good to people and to be grateful for your tenants. But at the same time, you realize that being lenient and working with people for a long time, if they don't do things like clean up their mess, you know, and I inherited a hoarder. So she wasn't somebody that I put in there, but I inherited her. I really should have cracked down on her so much sooner, you know, and and maybe something like this wouldn't have happened. So, you know, you take these things and you just, you learn from them and and you try to do the best you can to, to try to prevent it from ever happening again. But yeah. 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 The other thing I think you brought up, we both brought up is, is don't cheat out on insurance, right? Saving mm. 80 bucks or a hundred dollars a month may feel good or a year. I'm sorry, not a month, a year uh, may right. feel good for the first three or four years. And then one of these events happen and you're like, oops, right. It's, it's yeah. Get the lost rents, get the extra binders. Definitely. Um, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. And, it and even fun. with tenant insurance, you know, we've always basically said we highly recommend renter's insurance. In our state, we can say we're going to make them to sign a lease, but if they let it go, we can't evict them because their insurance lapsed because it's mm-hmm. basically a, an issue of something that's their choice whether to have it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but your insurance companies really want them to have that renter's insurance to help kind of subrogate, you know, who's responsible for how much. Um, so I think I'm going to definitely... Um, tell them all I require it Mm -hmm. and just tell them that they have to, you know, update it every year and and put more pressure, even if I can't evict them because of it. Um, I had highly recommended to these tenants that they have renter's insurance and, you know, told them a story of when somebody uh, that rented in one of my buildings did lose all of their contents because of a a claim that wasn't a fire. Um, but you know, people still choose not to have it. And for $7, $8 a month max for good coverage, it's so important that tenants have renter's insurance and, you know, something I'm going to push harder for going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like evaluating your processes and procedures when life kind of, you know, taps you on the shoulder and says, pay attention, pay attention to me. Yeah. Uh, these, these little tweaks. So, um, what else, what else can we share with people? Because again, this is real life. It happens. It hurts. But you're still running a business, right? Yes, yes. And, you know, we, we have a property that I just closed on, uh, 250 units that I'm asset managing. So we've mm-hmm. got 
a lot of, of work that I'm doing to work with the PMs and onboard those. And we're finishing up a loan and surveys and things like that on a property we're supposed to close in a couple of weeks, another big apartment complex and this, and you know, you, uh, times like this, I'm very thankful um, that I've started investing in larger properties with a team where yep. I'm not the only one that's doing everything because that's for my smaller rentals, it's, you know, pretty much my husband and I, and when these kind of things happen, things do fall the cra through the cracks just because you don't have bandwidth to handle all the hours that it takes to handle everything you have. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful right now that I have teams helping with those bigger assets um, b because of these, th this situation right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. Actually something just, something just sparked um, an idea. Let's rewind the clock and pretend this was 12 months ago. So don't have the team, don't have the bigger deals, but, but you still have a full-time job. How, <laughs> how, how's that going to work out? <laughs> well, let me just tell you, about 18 months ago, I had what I thought was the worst month in my real estate career. And it actually is what's helped me to be able to handle this one without too much anxiety and ah. say, you know what, if I got through that one, I can get through this one. And what I had to happen was I was just rounding the corner to be able to start to, to, to give my notice and retire. And I kid you not, we had a hurricane with that flooded a couple basements followed by major windstorms i lost a full roof oh, and shingles on my house and about um a week earlier we had the worst mold claim any mold oh. remediation company here that had seen it had ever seen oh, and God. basically in about a four to six weeks period of time we had a pressure relief valve work uh, break in a dirt floor basement and nobody knew and the tenant that was there, you know, kind of noticed poor water pressure and not hot water, but she didn't say anything to us. She just stayed with her boyfriend. And we ended up having a mold claim that was devastating. And I found out very quickly that um, insurance policies have a cap on how much they'll pay for mold damage. Oh, no. And so we were hit really hard financially, but at the same time trying to rehome, you know, tenants, um, take care of the mold claim, deal with, um, you know, people being sick because of mold and, you know, fear of lawsuits and then the roof and then all these things happen in one month period. And I couldn't do anything else. And I, I really needed a mental break. I, after that month, I said, I can't buy anything else for the next six months. We need to take a break, deal with these things, yeah. recover financially and deal with the, you know, the other day-to-day -day things that were still happening with tenants and our children and our jobs. And it was, it was absolutely, um, devastating really you know yeah. I'm just thankful there's no again no loss of life or anybody seriously injured or sick but yeah. um, these kind of things can really knock you back um, both your time your your emotions you know the dealing with the people and, and the finances and so I, I've been there and yeah. it's much easier um, when you have other people to help you yeah. um, and when you only have one big claim at one time so yeah I had no idea that again this just People need to watch this video over and over again because there are too many videos out there talking about all the good stuff that happens with real estate, <laughs> cash flow, wealth generation, legacy, you know, all that stuff. I mean, listen to the story how we started with fire and then rewind 18 months to, to hear Anna's story. It's um, this stuff happens. And if you're going to yeah. be in the game long enough, it's going to happen to you. I am sorry. Yeah. And I had 10 years with no claims. Easy yeah. peasy, you know, <laughs> thinking, woo, this is this is great. And then I'm, I'm lucky. Like, oh, great. Hi, insurance adjuster. I remember meeting you last year for a really bad claim. Now I just pray my, my premiums don't go up, you know, yeah. absolutely crazy. But you know, it's, it's just a matter, like you said, uh, of when it's, it's not if it, something yeah. will happen. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons you have to be really careful about what you buy and making sure you have reserves, um, oh, you know, sure. really good insurance and, and that you really think through you know, what happens if I have a devastating loss? Can I handle it financially? And, yeah. and helps you to be more careful about leverage and making sure you have some reserves and things like that. Um, yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is worry about the money yeah. when you're already worried about, you know, the people and just the time involved and, and liability and that kind of thing. Yeah. And again, there's, there's subtle things in your, both your stories and all three of mine. They were at least partially they the buildings themselves although the pressure relief valve maybe that was a 
the building or the, the, the structure, right? But the yeah. tenant could have warned you earlier, right? They noticed uh -huh. something, right? It would have yeah. gone from a $2,000 problem into whatever it grew to, which was not, which was much bigger. Yeah. But again, you're dealing with people and you, you can't, people are weird, right? Yeah. They, will, they will go live with their boyfriend instead of telling the landlord, hey, I have no hot water. Yeah. <laughs> tell me you don't have hot water, think, I'll fix it. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Or I've got, I've got a toilet that racked up hundreds of dollars of water bill, but I didn't want to bother you because I know you're so busy. It's like, it's in my lease, literally. If you notice these things, you must let me know, or you can be liable for the cost of that thing getting worse. But yeah. guess when I added that clause 18 after. months ago, after yeah. that, you know, <laughs> and I use it now when I meet, I still meet with tenants to go over the lease because mm. I want to make that face to face. Yeah. You know, there are some exceptions where I do it electronic, but before they move in, I'm going over these things with every single person and saying, do not be worried about bugging me. You must bug me when these things happen because it can get bad for all of us if you do not. So I'd rather them bug me than think, oh, I don't want to bother her. You know, it just depends on the person's personality. But when yeah. you warn them up front, here's the things that can happen. Here's what I've experienced. Let's yeah. make sure that we're on the same page. Yeah. You know, hopefully fewer and fewer tenants do something like that. Yeah, I want to know. I would much rather fix a leaky toilet for a hundred dollars service fee than you yeah. know. Oh, it's just it again. You're you're a landlord, which means you're dealing with people, and people are weird. It's just <laughs> I can't say it any other way. The stories I've heard and the things that just don't make <laughs> logical sense to me over the years. It's like, oh my god, really? Um, but Michael, yeah. it makes me just want to invest in a whole bunch of self storage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's see. Can I buy land and just do lots or something? Yeah, it's just it's just funny. <laughs> oh well, I'm, I'm, it's fun that we can laugh about this. A, I'm glad yeah. you're working through this. Uh, it, it, you know, a so happy, no loss of life. That's yes, that's absolutely. Um, so that's good. You'll get through this. You'll have a decision. I'm guessing whether you want to rebuild or not. Again, twice I took the cash and. Sold a lot because I didn't want the headache, but we'll see where you go with this. Uh, well, any last thoughts? Yeah. Question. I'll go ask ahead. you for a little wisdom on this one. Sure. So I understand that when they cut the first check, they depreciate the value of the building. So they do a depreciation and say, you're going to get X dollars as if the property was depreciated and here's what it's worth in their eyes today. And they don't release the additional until you rebuild. So I think, and I don't know if it's that way in every state or in every mm -hmm. policy, but I think that if I took the cash, I'd get a whole lot less than if I rebuild. Well, I, again, I don't know the rules in other states. What I, the, the two times that I took the check, the adjuster went through probably within a week of the event. Uh, he, came, he, both times in this case, he came back and said, here's your number. If, you know, call it 200 grand. I think one was 212 and one was like 186, whatever, because they were rebuild, right? This is what it was going to be. Here are the things we're going to deduct, you know, for whatever reason, I don't understand the logic, but I'm sure it was legit. And here's your net number. What do you want to do? And I'm like, well, is that enough to rebuild? I saw my own, because you get to pick your own contractors, right? I said, yeah, we probably can right. rebuild. You're going to have to make some choices. Uh, but I'm like, hey, my debt on it is, let's just make up a number 60 grand. You know, I'll walk away with 120 grand and be able to use that money elsewhere. And, and mm -hmm. I can still sell the lot. <laughs> Easy choice. Yeah. So uh, I took, I took the money yeah. and ran. So yeah. Yeah. So just have them, have them generate a net number. Uh, because again, yeah. in your, in your case, right, you have debt, right? So it, yeah. they may not give you enough to pay the debt in my, both my cases, these were properties I bought at the bottom. So frankly, I got checks that were worth more than I would have sold them for without being burned. Right. Go figure that right. right? Wow. Well, that was, that wow. was good. Um, but yeah, you'll have some choices to make for sure. Good. I'll keep you posted. Yeah, I'm gonna watch your. I always watch you on Facebook because you're so you're so just <laughs> out there. It's like this is what's happening. I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel I feel for her. She's gonna get through it. So, any last minute thoughts for uh, the audience watching this? Again, bad stuff happens. Yeah, I just say you know anticipate the bad things will that will happen, and when they do, you know take a deep breath. Don't let yourself get you know overwhelmed and and emotional. It's easy yeah. to do. Yeah. And just, you know, day by day, take care of the urgent, then the important, then the other things, you know, can kind of wait. So um, just making sure, you know, you're taking care of people is the most important thing. You know, all these other things are important and, and things to think through, um, both to prepare 
um, for these things happening in the future and putting systems in place to try to prevent them from happening, you know, in hindsight's important. Very well said. We'll leave it at that. Anna, thank you very much for your time. I know you gave us a window when you have so much going on, so I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You got it.